The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, and to let the oppressed go free. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Good people, I'm sure you are well. It is Friday, the 11th day, 11th day of June, in the year of our Lord and Savior, 2021. This is a great day, because 16 years ago, a day like today, June 11th, in the year of our Lord and Savior, 2005, I was ordained into Catholic priesthood. And therefore today it is my 16th anniversary and I thank God. I thank God for the great gift of this beautiful day. And I'm requesting that you join me in this day as we celebrate and we thank God. Later in the day we shall celebrate Mass. But I did say it is important that very early in the morning I greet you and I remind you that today it is the day and I request that you pray with and for me. Let us pray. O oh God, who made your only begotten Son, eternal High Priest, grant that those he has chosen as ministers and stewards of your mysteries may be found faithful in carrying out the ministry they have received. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Good people, I, as I said, I am so happy that the Lord has given me this day. I thank God for the gift of you as my friends. You have journeyed with me. You have loved me. You have prayed for me. The intention or the objective of talking to you this, this morning and this day, because I know it is not morning to everybody, to those in Europe and other areas of Americas, it may be different, but wherever it is that you are, as you listen to me, to me please know that I am coming to say thank you. Many a times we forget to say thank you, and then we think that the treatment that other people give to us it is automatic and it is our, their duty and we should be treated thus. I want to say thank you because of the treatment of the love and everything that you have shown me. And I want to encourage many others, especially the young people who want to join priesthood and the rest of you who pray for us, that there is always room for more and more priests in this world. I want to talk to my brother priests who have journeyed with me, who pray with me, a good, good, good number of them who are even today celebrating Mass for me. I want to thank you so, so much, whatever it is that you are. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and thank you. Now, why does the world need priests? It is important that uh, we answer that question. And for the young men listening to me, why do you want to become a priest? Maybe I can share with you a few reasons why it is important that you become a priest. The world needs priests because the world is in need of heroes. Now that is important. Priests are heroes for Christ. Father C.K. is one. So the priests you have known, these are heroes. Spiritual heroes, and they fight for us, all of us. And because the world needs heroes, that is why we are there. Number two, if you want to be a priest, like Father C.K., be a priest because without priests, we have no access to Christ. If you are a Catholic, you know what this means. 
even if you are not, you also know what this means. That without the priest who will be able to celebrate mass with us and for us, and change the body, uh, the bread and wine to become a uh, body and blood of Christ, then we, we need more of them. Be a priest to forgive sins. I love this. Because um, we read, whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven through the sacrament of holy reconciliation. The importance of confession is hard to exaggerate it. It was the only sacrament Jesus instituted after the resurrection when he breathed on the apostles. So, confession was the constant subject of urgent appeals from St. John Paul II, and Pope Francis has taken up the same call early and often. In 2013, he said, and I quote, I go to confession every two weeks. In 2014, he confessed in view of cameras to make a point saying, and I quote, do not be afraid of confession. And in 2018, his 24-hour confession initiative had become a worldwide hit. So, that is important. The other point is, be a priest so that you can be a living icon of Christ. And this is always my prayer, that I become a living icon of Christ. The world needs fathers. And that is why I am a priest. And you are a priest, listen to me. And that is why, as a young man, you become a priest because the world needs fathers. You be one. And then, the priest expands your family. So be a priest for your family to be expanded. Be a priest to reconcile others and to give hope. To give hope. And when I talk about giving hope, I just talk about that, giving hope. So I want to request all my brother priests, whatever it is that you are going through, whatever it is that you are, please don't give up. I know life can be tough at some point, but please do not give up. Please don't. Those of you who are contemplating leaving priesthood, please don't, because you never know how many people you inspire by just being there. I always remember some words that were shared with me by a, free, a, a priest from Zambia when I was a young priest at the university. Uh, the priest is already uh, deceased. And he used to tell me that, Father CK, um, let's keep on being good priests. Um, as, so that, and, and, I, and, I, and I loved this, let us continue being good priests so that if we go to heaven, even with all our struggles, at least God will know that we, 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 we tried. God will know that we tried. And he would tell me this quite every other day. He was a bit elderly. Now he is resting. Padre, rest in peace. So let's keep on trying. There is struggles everywhere. Now, I want to tell you an experience I had, I think five years ago, or, yeah. I, I gave a talk to priests in one of the countries in Europe. Um, and uh, as I was talking to them, I had noted, and a number of them had whispered to me, that they feel like uh, they've come to, to an end. And this is what I, I asked the priests, those priests. Uh, in their country, that year, they had the highest rate of divorce that year. So I asked them, in your country, there are so many marriages that are breaking every day. 
that that divorce rate is increasing by every hour. God has given you a vocation to become a priest. And now you want to quit priesthood to go and get married. Statistically, that then would mean that even you who is quitting priesthood to go and get married, there is a possibility that 10 years down the line, you will have divorced also. How sad will it be for you to leave priesthood, enter into marriage, end up in divorce? That would be the greatest injustice you can do to yourself. My dear brother priests, in Africa, in Europe, in Asia, South America, mention the countries, wherever it is that you are, I know it may be tough. But I want to know one thing. In every struggle you are going through, please make sure that you remain strong. You know why? Because God is taking notes. I love that. Remember, in your struggles, in your pains, in your crises, in your rejections, in your frustrations, God is taking notes. He is taking notes. You're not alone. So thank you. Please join me in thanksgiving. Later we shall have mass. Later in the evening, we shall have the mass for this day. But I want to say thank you. Please keep on praying for me all the time. As I promised you, I continue with the same that I, that I want to make, the same uh, commitment that I will always pray for you. Today and every other day, always pray for me. And I plead with you to always pray for all the priests. There are some who have real, real struggles. Some even this day are contemplating leaving priesthood. Maybe it is your prayer that you help them to keep clinging. Again, my dear brother priest, please remember, whatever it is that you are going through, God is taking notes. I would want to extend the same to our gracious sisters and the nuns, our religious women. God has given you a beautiful vocation. When God gave you this beautiful vocation, he didn't tell you that my daughter, there will be no problems. That one he didn't. You are a religious woman today. And you are going to face rejections. Some of them from your very own sisters. Some of them from your very own nuns. The rejections and the brokenness that you'll be able to experience, quite a good number of them, a huge chunk, will come from the church. Others from outside there. Others for yourself making. But please note, please note, God did not call you because you are a weakling. God called you because you are a strong woman. And as I have said, even when you are in your deep crisis, where the, the odds are against you, and you feel like you have come to an end, and to the end, please always remember the words of Father C.K. God is taking notes. He is. I want to encourage you, and please know that I'm praying for you. I may not know you, I may never know you, I may never meet you, but please know, I am always praying for you. I am to you a priest and a servant. Thank you. Let us pray. May the divine sacrifice we have offered and received, O Lord, give new life to your priests and to all your servants, that united to you in unfailing love, they may receive the grace of forgiving, of giving worthy service to your majesty through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May the Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Do have a productive Friday. See you later in the evening for Holy Mass. Thank you.